Hey everybody, Jilly here from Baby Sleep Made Simple and ready to start another week, I guess. <laughs> I guess we have to, we have no choice. And here to answer all your questions about your baby, toddler, and preschooler's sleep. So hit me up, let's do this. Anything you're struggling with in regards to sleep, just drop here in the comments and I am going to give you some help. I'm gonna point you in the direction of a guide that I have on my website um, and or I'll give you through a few tips here. Um, and I'm gonna post in stories after the call so you guys can just swipe up and get access to all the guides that I talk about. So welcome. If you're new to Baby Sleep Made Simple, welcome. We're happy that you're here. Um, and if you've been with us a while, welcome back. Um, oh, I have a little bit of the Monday blues today, but I'm slowly getting over it. I think I just had such a good weekend. I unplugged properly, unplugged, turned my phone off, left it at home for a day. Life-changing life-changing. So it's like coming back. I'm a little bit like, ah. but if you're feeling fried and if you're just feeling overstimulated or just whatever, I highly recommend unplugging. I mean, it was minimal too. It was just turning my phone off, but it's a big deal. So, and it's nice, like, cause if you're, you know, normally I can't during the week, you know, if I'm not with my kids, but I was with them so I could do it. So I recommend you guys try it too. All right, let's talk baby sleep. I'm going to try to get to as many questions as I can today. And I hope you guys are well. I hope you're healthy. Um, let me know what's going on in your world. Claudia is up first. Oh yeah, I did that fun thing last week where I clicked on the on the comment to show it. I'll do it for big ones. Claudia says, any tips for, sur for surviving? To survive. <laughs> I love the words that we moms use, like, ah, not any tips on doing this? Is any tips on surviving this? Um, on surviving the three to two nap transition? Yes, but guys, can I just show you? My daughter crept in here while I was on a work call. And she wrote, I love you, mama. It's things like that that make me go, I can't believe I didn't want to be a mom. Or not that I didn't want to be a mom, but I can't believe I didn't know if I wanted to be a mom or whatever. It's the best. Um, yes, Claudia. So three to two nap transition. I have a whole guide on it. So I'm going to link you to it in my stories in a little while. You can also hop on over to my website. Um babysleepmadesimple.com and you can do a quick search for three to two nap transition and you'll see it. It's quite like detailed. It walks you through if your little one's ready and then if so, how you can make it work. Um, just know that for any nap transition, it doesn't happen in one day. It doesn't happen usually in three days. It usually take a f takes a few weeks. And the reason why is although your little one's developmentally ready to drop a nap, it's an adjustment extending their awake times and often uh, having them consolidate their daytime sleep and sleep even longer during the day. It's a bit of a transition for their whole body clock. So give it time, try to be as patient as you can and know that it's probably gonna be two to three weeks before you're settled into your new routine. But I've got a really good guide for you. So I'll link that into stories in a little while or you can hop on my website. Good luck. Ha, good morning, Mariana. A.E. Marine. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can pin. This is fun. Almost about 15 month old, really struggling with naps. He was still taking two naps. And the, oh goodness, and there, there I go. Okay, uh, and last couple of days has been only taking one night and fights naps hard. So I would say around 15 months, it could be the two to one nap transition that's causing your little one's troubles. The average age to transition to one nap is 15 months. So it makes sense. Um, but it's not like babies wake up one day and go, that's it. Ready for one nap. That two nap schedule was such a baby thing, right? It takes time. It takes time for, as I just mentioned, it takes time for their body clock to adjust. And it's usually like a two to three week process of dropping a nap. Uh, you'll find that some days your little one will need two naps and other days will only be able to, you know, will be able to get by with only one. Um, so check out that guide, but also I have a one-year-old sleep guide because it could be something else kind of going on if nights are kind of crumbling as well. So my one-year-old sleep guide walks you through um, common sleep struggles we see in your toddler's first year, second year of life, but first year when they're one year old. And it um, will help you know if there's something else that's also going on. You can definitely try to transition to one nap and give it several days, but you'll know very quickly whether your little one's ready or not. They might be okay having one nap. They may nap for an hour and a half to two and a half hours, but if their night sleep just it becomes terribly worse and if their you know moods really suffer with longer awake times, you may need to hold on to two naps for a while. But my God, we'll walk you through it all, okay? So have a look at that. Let us know if you have any follow-up questions.
and good luck. My daughter can sleep hours on me, but only 30 minutes in her bed during the day, but able to sleep a whole night in her bed, no problem. Well, that's great. So it depends on, I mean, it depends on how old your little one is. I could fine tune my advice, but this is brilliant because the thing is your little one can sleep in her bed all night long. So she literally, she can do it. It's just that she prefers to sleep on you during the day. And daytime sleep, it's more fickle and also the drive to sleep is not as strong during the day. And so, it's not like by the time our little one hits bedtime and this the first few hours of nighttime sleep, they are exhausted. And so that's why we always start sleep training at that time because it's um, the time where they're easiest, um, they adapt easiest, you know, to any changes in their sleep routine. But it's not like that during the day. The sleep, the drive to sleep comes and goes. I'm tongue tied today. So what I would say is if your little one is six months or older, then I recommend you begin nap training, which is teaching your little one to sleep in the crib for all naps and also to sleep independently for naps. And then you will find they will transition quite easily to a consistent nap routine every day, whether it's you know two naps a day, one nap a day, I'm not sure how old they are, but it sounds like it's time for nap training since your little one is sleeping in the crib all night. So it depends on how old they are. You can hop on over to babysleepmadesimple.com and you can click your little one's age in the top menu and you get the um, corresponding guide for their age and it walks you through all that. And you can also check out my guide. I'm gonna have a guide on extending naps. Um, I'll link you to my naps program if you're interested in that. Um, but yeah, I would begin nap training if your little one's six months or older and check out the uh, age guide on my website because that can also help. Good luck. Home with Zaib. Good afternoon, my little one is 16 months only, sorry, is taking two naps a day, 10 and two. It only, and only sleeps at night for 10 hours, eight to six, is this enough? So we're getting 10 hours of sleep at night. We don't know how long the two naps are. I will say, so 16 months old, we like to see 11 to 12 hours of night sleep and about two to three hours of daytime sleep. So minimum sleep would really be 13 total hours a day and it could go up to like 15. I give you guys these recommendations to let you know kind of what's normal and what you can aim for. Because if you see if you're far below that or far above it, it's definitely something to work on. If your little one's only sleeping 10 or 11 total hours a day and is quite grumpy during the day and is fighting sleep hard, oh look, we need to get them more total sleep, right? I don't give these recommendations to kind of make parents like worry or obsess about it, which can be an unfortunate you know, um, consequence. So my point is, I don't know how long your little one's naps are, but I would love to see, I'd love to see three hours of napping because then that would be 13 hours. But even if you're getting 12 or 12 and a half total hours of sleep every day between naps and night sleep, but if your little one's happy between sleeps, thriving, eating well, everybody's doing okay, then you don't need to worry about anything. If the naps are an hour each, and so your little one's sleeping a total of 12 hours a day, but is happy as a clam, you're fine. Don't worry about it, it's okay. But if your little one's fighting sleep at any point, if your little one's waking up, well, they sleep eight to six, so that's okay. Fighting sleep, waking up a lot at night, if um, they're really, the moods are up and down during the day, if you feel like, like you really deep down know that they need more sleep, then I would work on it. I would work on extending naps if they're short, um, less than three total hours. But I'd also work on this nighttime sleep and I would move bedtime to 7.30 for several nights in a row, because what we find is the easiest place to add in lost sleep is with an earlier bedtime. And just 30 minutes can actually make a difference. And maybe you even up to move it up to even an hour, up to seven o'clock. That can actually make a big difference. I know just with our family, my husband will still remark as though it's the first time. You know, when, when our six-year-old goes to bed at a decent hour, we're like on the online home learning thing. And we actually have a good bedtime. I mean, she's asleep at 8.30, maybe nine, she's six and a half. But if she's asleep at eight, like there's a difference the next day, hands down. So 30 minutes can make a difference for all ages. Um, anyway, so I gave you a few scenarios to help you know if that's okay, but I hope that helps. <laughs> Good luck. Stina Estrada, almost seven month old, sleeps well enough, but I feel like he still needs to be left alone most nights to cry and settle. Is that normal after having done sleep training? You mean like we sleep trained and he's sleeping well, we're happy, but he still has to cry himself to sleep? Is that what you mean? Um, it can be normal. So especially if you used a method like the Ferber method or like, you know, one of the methods where your little one gets used to falling asleep on their own straight away, like, you know, checking in Ferber method. 
Um, it is normal that there's some residual crying in order to fall asleep, usually for an average of about two weeks. It's just what our little ones have learned. It's they've learned this is the way that they blow off steam before they fall asleep. And as long as it's less than 20 minutes, and it's not extreme crying, like screaming or you know getting so upset that they vomit or anything like that, less than 15 minutes, they fall asleep, they sleep beautifully every night, it is normal. But you should expect it to subside around two weeks, you know, give or take a few days. Um, but yes, it can be normal. Um, and just tell yourself, rather than he's crying because he's so upset about sleep training, tell yourself, this is how he's learned to blow off steam, you know? And it will not last forever, I promise you. Very soon he'll be rolling around, he'll be talking, singing, babbling in order to fall asleep. He's just going to have to learn that new way of falling asleep. And right now he's just fussing um, in order to fall asleep. But yes, anything more than 20 minutes, um, I would look at your schedule and I would look at your awake times and perhaps um, shorten them up a bit because maybe he's a bit overtired. Maybe he's a bit undertired, but look at specific awake times. He's almost seven months old, I think. Yes, so awake times between two to three hours until your little one is asleep. So as long as you're in that range, it should be fine. But if for any reason it's been too short or too long, that could lead to prolonged crying in order to fall asleep. All right, hang in there. Uh, Nat Natalia. Eight month old, awake times are 2.75, 3.25, 3.5. Shorter windows cause cat naps, but he continues waking at 5 a.m. I base his first nap off 6 a.m., but has made no difference, fully sleep trained. Okay, perfect. So you have a fully sleep trained little one, which means they fall asleep at bedtime and they sleep through the night. If they wake during the night, they resettle themselves back to sleep, right? Okay, so awake times for an eight month old should be two to three hours. So you're okay. I mean, unless you're on two naps a day and it's two and a half to three and a half, you're okay. Two hours, 45 minutes, three hours, 15 minutes, three and a half hours is perfect. Um, he cat naps, but he continues waking at 5 a.m. I base his first nap off 6 a.m., but it makes no difference. I guess I would have to see like a little bit more of your schedule, but what I will is I'll, what I will do is I'll drop my link to my baby waking early guide. I was actually just looking at it today and making another little guide for our program, 21 Days of Peace and Quiet, to give extra tips for early wakings. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd have to see the specifics of your situation, like um, the nap lengths and also bedtime. But what I will say is have a look at my baby waking early guide because I walk you through, I think it's nine different tips to get your little one sleeping later in the morning. Perhaps it's that we need to pull bedtime up. Perhaps it is the naps and we need to work on extending them. Um, perhaps it's your little one sleep environment that could be contributing. So what I will say, Natalie, is have a look at my guide and make sure you're doing all of the steps in that guide for several, several days consistently because it can take a while for your little one to adjust. And then you should see their night wake, the early waking, sorry, improve when you're following all of the tips. Um, okay, have a look at it and you can let us know if you have any follow-up questions. You're welcome, Zaib. Lucy, how to extend a three-month-old's nap? He wakes up after half an hour every time, whether in a buggy or in a carrier, doesn't sleep anywhere else. Used to sleep so well. Three to four months can be a really trying time for little ones because we see the way that they sleep, their patterns of sleep, the sleep habits often change. Um, some three month olds sleep like a dream and then it hits them between three to five months most families see a change, not always something disastrous, but a change. So my daughter, it was four months. She's so predictable. Four months sleep regression, boom, right when it should happen. My son, we got through the fourth month and I was like, you know, and then the fifth month was like a punch in the face because I got cocky because um, <laughs> I shared the jinx is real. Um, no, but what I will say is Lucy, you're not alone. It's your little one's brain is going through such a huge development between the months of three to five. And part of that development is that their sleep patterns change totally normal. I've got just the guide for you called three month old sleep problems and solutions. Um, and I've got another one about three month old sleep schedule. So I will post both of those in the story so you can check them out in a little while. What I will say is I'm not sure what your awake times are, but more than likely they're, they're shorter than you think they might need to be as in only one to two hours all day long. And so specifically the morning nap is usually the easiest one to extend because we, we pretty much know how to nail that awake time. The morning awake time for a three month old should be one hour. So if your little one gets up at 7.20 tomorrow morning, that's the time they wake up, then at 8.20 you wanna aim for them to be asleep. Okay, so not 8.20 to 8.30, oh, let's go outside to start a stroll, 
you know, not 8.30, oh crap, let me just make myself a smoothie so then I can get you down. Ideally, they're asleep at 8.20, so factor in how long it takes them to fall asleep. And the reason why I'm so particular about this is because when we can nail that first awake time, we usually see that morning nap hit at least an hour, but usually longer. So um, it doesn't mean it has to be at home in the crib. If your little one's really struggling with that, you could plan to go for a walk in the buggy. Um, make sure your little one's like buggy's lying flat and you know, you go for a nice long walk, you're supervising it. And if some little ones need you to keep walking, but it can be a nice morning walk for you. I used to do that with my son. We'd go right at the hour, get my daughter on the bus, like to the minute. And we'd go for that walk at one hour. And as long as, I mean, we're lucky we have a beautiful area we can walk around our neighborhood. As long as I kept walking, which was fine by me, he would sleep a good hour or an hour, 15 minutes. So I would try that, Lucy. Once you get to where that becomes a more predictable nap, then you could try having it at home. And you can still help him fall asleep for this nap. So you could rock him to sleep. You could you know, bounce, hold him to sleep um, for this first nap and see if you could place him in the crib already asleep. And you may find that this nap slowly becomes that one you get to have at home consistently well every day, which can be nice. Otherwise, follow awake times of one to two hours for the rest of the day, and I'll let my uh, three-month-old sleep guides uh, tell you all the rest. But there's definitely hope. It's very normal for sleep patterns to change at this age, but we can definitely gently start shaping your little one's sleep right now so that by the time they turn like five months, then they're really, really ready to learn how to sleep independently and predictably well. Okay, hang in there, honey, and um, have a look at my guides in a little bit. Good luck. Okay, next question is from Tutu, 26 month old, used to wake later in the morning and take longer naps, but this week has woken early in the morning and takes a 50 minute nap. Hmm, I have a good guide on how to get your toddler to nap. I will post that in stories so you can have a look at that. What we find with older kids like toddlers and, and preschool children, we obviously have to look at their sleep schedule. But we also look at lifestyle, behavior, nutrition, um, several things, you know, several factors in their life that can influence how they sleep. But I mean, if your little one's been sleeping really well and then just this week things got crazy, I would sit down with my young two-year-old and just, you know, have a really simple and upbeat, sweet conversation of, you know, cuddles, love, mommy loves you, and then just kind of <laughs> redirect the conversation. So it's like today when you nap, not if. When you nap today, da, 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 you cuddle your teddy bear and your bed, isn't it so nice? And mommy will let you know when nap is over. If you wake up and it's, you know, mommy comes and says, shh, shh, shh then it's still sleepy time. And just kind of letting them know. And they'll be like, mm. um, same thing in the morning. You can also say, mommy will come and let you know when it's morning time and time to get up and have breakfast. Um, several parents have reached out to me recently telling me that they've had really good success with the toddler clocks. If that's something you're interested in, you could probably find one on Amazon, really affordable. But it's a clock that you program to change colors or light up at a certain time in the morning. And so you're kind of like outsourcing parenting <laughs> to this clock. And this for a certain type of toddler, it can work really, really well. Um, some toddlers won't care what the clock says. But a lot of them, if you really make a fun game out of it, and ooh, when it turns green in the morning, you get to get out and get a sticker, you know, you get like something, they get a little bit of a treat in the beginning. Um, and if, oh, if you wake up and it's still blue or it's still red, no, it's still nighttime, so we have to stay asleep. And really just kind of outsource it to the clock, keep it lighthearted and funny. A lot of parents have had success both with short naps and also with early wakings. So you could consider um, that. I actually have a social media post on that that I will link in stories so you can check out too. Um, and I also have a toddler waking early guide. So I will link all of these in stories in a little while. Um, I would definitely try to communication to too, and then have a look at my getting your toddler to nap longer guide as well. And that, between all of that, you should definitely get some tips that will get your little one back into their good sleeping groove. Good luck. Taylor. Taylor Joe Peters. I like that. I like your name. I have a 14 month old that loves her morning sleep, is always ready for it at 9 to 9 30. After a 6 to 6.30 a.m. wake up, she is refusing her second nap, which is leading to a very long awake time before bed. I don't know. I lost my favorite emoji. I don't know. Um, okay, first thing, Taylor, is limit the morning nap to one hour. I don't know if you're doing that yet, but this is something we do around 12 months if we find that second nap is really hard to get. Limit the morning nap to one hour. Excuse me while I get the fuzz out of my mouth. 
while I get the fuzz out of it. Yeah, got it. Um, limit the morning nap to one hour and then get your little one outside between naps. Super annoying advice, I know, but I'm living it right now. I have a 13 month old and buddy, if we don't limit the morning nap to one hour and if we don't get outside between naps, you can forget the second nap. But when we do, he naps, you know, an hour 15, maybe a little bit longer. Walking on wood. Um, so I would definitely do that. And I would try those tips for one week straight. So limiting the morning nap, getting outside, like, and I mean, my little guy's not walking yet, but like getting outside, scooting, crawling, rolling, walking, whatever, but just outside and physical. If you can't get outside because of the weather one day, then just try to have a, like a, an energetic time between naps. And what I mean by that is like just, you know, free time on the floor, just moving, scooting, and being quite physical. Do I would do that for one week straight and see if that fixes the problem. If it does, great. You'll probably need another month or so before your little one's ready to transition to one nap. If it doesn't work despite all of your hard effort trying, then it could be time to start transitioning to one nap, but you'll just have to go slowly. You'll have to drop the afternoon nap as you basically have done have the morning nap and then you're just going to slowly push it later by about only 15 minutes at every day or two to get your little one used to having a longer morning awake time. But I wouldn't go there yet. So try those tips. Check out my two to one nap transition guide and um, good, good, good luck. Let us know how it goes. Bree Pearson. Hi. I have a 13 month old sleeps through the night, goes down at seven, wakes up at five, one nap a day. How do I get her to sleep until 6.37? I've even tried putting her down at 8 instead. Don't put her down at 8 because that'll backfire and she'll wake up even earlier. It'll be terrible. Um, okay, so one nap a day. So I'd love to see your sleep schedule, Brie, but what I'll walk you through is a th 13 months is a bit early for one nap. You may find that your little one takes one nap and seems to handle during the day taking one nap a day, but it could actually be contributing to the early wakings, which is insane, I know. And that's because awake times that are too long for your little one's like developmental readiness, as well as not enough daytime sleep, so it's for sure less than two total hours of daytime sleep. Even though your little one might be fine during the day, it can affect their nighttime sleep, and this can be that they fight bedtime, it could be that they wake more at night, or it could be that they wake early in the morning. So I don't know how long your little one's been on one nap. If the nap is always less than two hours, I would, and if it's recent that they've switched to one nap, I would ask you to reconsider um, and potentially go back to two naps for a while with awake times between three to four hours. Um, limiting the morning nap to one hour. I hope you have your pen with you. Um, and doing what I mentioned in the earlier question of getting a little one outside and really trying to get those two naps because it's crazy. My little guy's 13 months and he has had one nap days. We tried a few weeks ago. We failed at the one nap transition because I was like, uh, he's my guinea pig. Let's just try. And he, the nap was fine. The awake times, he seemed fine. Night sleep crumbled to bits. So, and he woke early in the morning, um, despite waking up at night. So it didn't work. And so for the majority of 13 month olds are not yet ready for it. So if that criteria applies, then try to go back to two naps. If you're like, no way, we've been on one nap for a while, never takes two naps, that's cool. But really try to have this nap be two to three hours every day. If you have to help your little one nap to extend that nap, to make that happen in the meantime, I would do it and see if that helps with the early wakings. Um, and then it just depends on awake times, really. I mean, if seven o'clock bedtime is a five to six hour awake time from their nap, then it's too late. And I would actually move bedtime to 6.30 for just four or five days straight every night in a row and see if that helps because that can often help. It seems so, so, so crazy, I know, but it really works. Moving bedtime a little bit earlier, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, sometimes an hour, depending on you know your little one's awake times and sleep schedule can make the biggest difference with early wakings. They can go from sleeping 10 and a half hours at night to sleeping like 11 and a half to 12. It's crazy. So I would consider trying that. And also check out my two guides because your little one just became a toddler. But check out both my toddler and baby waking early guides because they give you other really tangible tips that you can start doing. So I'm going to link those um, in stories in just a little while when the call's over. Um, so you can check that out. But I would, there's definitely there are definitely things that we can do to get your little one sleeping later in the morning because we can really expect 11 to 12 hours of night sleep. All right. I hope that helps, Bree. Let us know how it goes. Marcy Jess, my four-month-old wakes every two hours at night. I'm so, 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 so sorry to hear this, but I, I'm sure it's 
the four monthly regression. I'm going to link you to my guide on this. Um, it's going to walk you through how you can help your little one sleep well at this age. Your baby's fourth month is just so notorious because there's a huge development that happens. Your baby's brain goes through this big development and uh, part of the development is their sleep patterns. They change. They become more adult-like. And so we just have to go with the flow really at this age and we have specific tips that you can do to help your four month old sleep well. You gotta get through the fourth month and then once you enter the fifth month, you'll know your little one's been through this regression, been through this development and is now ready to sleep independently. So that's an upside of this development is at, after they come out of it, which is why I believe sleep training can start at five months and that we can be sure your little one's out of the fourth month development. We know they've been through it. Now we know that they can learn the skill of sleeping independently, which leads to much, much, much longer sleep stretches. It's amazing. So I'm gonna link you to my four month regression guide. Start doing those tips. It's not sleep training traditionally. It's gentle tips that you can do, tweaking schedule, starting relaxing routines that can actually make a world of difference. So Marcy Jess, I, I'll actually even tag you in that, Marcy Jess. Let's write that down. I should be writing this down all along. Sorry, guys. Um, I'll tag you in that story so you can check that out. Um, hang in there, mama. We've all been there. You will survive. It will be over soon, and your little one will be able to learn to sleep independently. All right, hang in there and um, let us know how you go. Debbie Debbie, hi, Timon thought only sleeps being held. Naps and night, help, ha ha. I love that you're laughing about it, Debbie. So one of my closest friends ever is Debbie, and she laughs about everything too. So it must be the name. Um, we can definitely help your 10 month old sleep better because at 10 months old, we know your baby can learn to sleep all night independently in the crib and nap independently in the crib. They just don't want to, <laughs> but they can be guided there. They are an older baby, so we can definitely teach your little one. I'm going to start by um, linking you to my 10 month old sleep guide and stories after the call. So you make sure you spend a few days just implementing the tips from this age specific guide. That'll make sure your baby is well rested. And then I really recommend Debbie that you start sleep training. Um, the sooner the better because sleep training not only gets your little one sleeping through the night, but it gets them sleeping in the crib, happily falling asleep on their own there. Um, and again, at your little one's age, we know it can happen. So that's what I recommend. Where are we? December 7th today? Is that what today is? So you could definitely get started the sooner the better and have your little one sleep trained by the time the holidays rolls around, by the time Christmas and New Year's rolls around, which could be great. I could have a really corny joke right now. talk about silent nights, but I won't. Um, but we can definitely make it happen or you can make that your New Year's resolution. But it would be a great way to ring in 2021 with everybody being well rested. So um, let us know if you have any questions, but I'll link you to my 10 month old sleep guide um, and also to my sleep training program, 21 days to peace and quiet, if you're interested. Good luck. Forever Ricks. Hi, Julie, four and a half month old is fighting sleep like Kung Fu. No naps over 35 minutes, even when held. Naps three to four times a day, taking longer to put him down does not self-settle, wakes to nurse and stays it for two hours. Oh my gosh, that's the worst. Like I would rather a baby that wakes up really frequently than a baby that wakes up and won't go back to sleep. And I know it's kind of like, you know, the marathon wakings are just, just, just the worst. I feel for you forever, Ricks. Um, as I just mentioned with an earlier question, the fourth month is a very notorious age for sleep problems because of the big development that happens and it's what causes the four month sleep regression. Because when our babies advance in one area, they often regress temporarily in another area. So it's definitely something that we can work on. I'm gonna link you to my four month old sleep regression guide. I'm gonna tag you too. I'm gonna tag my four month old mamas because I feel you four dot ever dot. Ricks. And also Alyssa, our rock star team member, her little one is five and a half months old, but she's been struggling hard with the four month sleep regression. So I was just talking to her today. Um, so I feel for you four month old mamas. I'm going to link you to my guide, start doing all the tips. They're super gentle. They're not traditional sleep training. They will improve your little one's sleep. Um, and just know that in two weeks you can start sleep training and it may not seem like something to be excited about, but think about why you do it. It's like, you never get excited to go on a diet, right? But you get excited to be like, Ooh, and once I'm, uh, you know, I've gone on the diet and then I'm fit and trim and looking great and feeling good. That's why I do it. Same with sleep training, right? 
Uh, I wish I was selling vacations to Bora Bora, you know, but we sell the dream of what sleep training can provide, which is a well-rested, happy baby, a mom that's like more calm and present and rested, uh, which is, you know, a biological need that we all, all, all have. It's best for the family. So forever, Rex, I'm here for you. I'll link you to my four months sleep regression guide. Um, you can also check out my uh, sleep training program which you can start really really soon we'd love to walk you through it. we'd love to guide you through it all your little one can definitely learn to self-settle really really soon and also sleep in the crib so good luck have a look at my form of regression guide and let us know if you have any questions marina lopez can i start sleep training during the form of sleep regression my baby is three and a half months um, what I would prefer you do before you start sleep training very soon is to check out my three month old sleep guides because here's the deal. There's a lot of four month old questions. There's always a theme that comes out. As I mentioned, um, for those of you that are watching the whole call, you're gonna be like, oh my God, I need to go make a coffee. She's gonna say it again. But maybe if you're, you've just recently joined us, your baby, all babies, go through a really, really big development around the fourth month. For some, it can be a little early and we see sleep, sleep struggles appear at three months. For some, it can be a little bit later, like with my son, where the fifth month was really horrible and the fourth month was kind of fine. But it's generally at your baby's 16th to 20th week from their um, due date. And we see this because there are three big developments that actually happen, but one of them is a brain development. And with this brain development comes a change in sleep patterns and sleep cycles, and your baby's sleep becomes more adult-like. Um, it means they are more easily woken. They don't have these long, deep periods of restful sleep, unfortunately. But it's also, you know, I guess, evolutionary because now they're more connected to their environment and they will wake more often if they need to from instinctive signals to wake. So, it's a good thing. And an upside of it is that once your little one goes through this development, we know that they can learn to sleep like an adult, which means to fall asleep on their own and to resettle themselves if they wake during the night or after a short nap. So at three and a half months old, I just, you know, most little ones haven't gone through it. And even, you know, the day your little one turns 16 weeks, I can't guarantee that your little one's been through this development. And it won't harm them to begin sleep training at this age, but I fear why would we do it too early and have it not work and put you and your little one through that when we could hopefully just hang on a little while longer till we know they're ready and you're more confident and baby's a little bit older and then you know the magic can happen so also if you try to sleep train during any regression it's kind of stacking the odds against you like i wouldn't want to sign up to start a process like sleep training, which I know is not going to be the easiest thing I've ever done when my little one's already so much more restless, waking so much more often, they can't help it. They're going through a development, but why would I stack the odds against me that it's not going to work? So if you can hang out, Marina, if you can check out my three month old sleep guys, check out my four month old regression guide that I'm going to link in stories after this call. If you can start implementing those tips, that's enough like training for your little one to get through the next five or six weeks, and it should improve their sleep. It should get them on a more consistent enough routine so that by the time they turn five months, you'll be like, okay, we're ready for this. I feel confident my little one's sleep has improved. Um, they're sleeping a little bit better. They're more well rested, and then you can begin sleep training. I don't love doing it the fourth month. I sometimes make exceptions, and that's for clients in our program who joined, who are struggling really, 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 really hard because some babies just struggle more than others. And if the parents just beg, can we please start? I say, okay, let's start. And let's start with one of the gentle sleep training methods we have in our program. But I wouldn't jump to that. I would get to that point after I tried other options. Okay. I hope that that helps. And let us know if you need anything. Alrighty. Next question is right here. My baby has some weird way to soothe herself to sleep. Please help. I'm 32 weeks pregnant and it, it hurts that she bangs herself on me to sleep more like masturbating. She is 16 months old. Um, funny enough, I actually talked about this with another parent recently. I would talk to your little one's doctor, their pediatrician, if you feel like there's just anything out of the ordinary. I would definitely bring it up to them. Um, and see what they say about it. But what I would say is if you're 32 weeks pregnant and if you have a 16 month old, it's definitely time to sleep train. We have eight weeks, maybe less, 
to get your toddler sleeping in the crib easily and happily all night long, 11 to 12 hours. And honey, you are gonna need that when you have a newborn. You're gonna need that because your newborn is going to wake throughout the night to feed, which is totally normal. You're gonna be up with your newborn. Having a toddler that doesn't sleep well at night and also needs to sleep on you and disrupt you um, is really just gonna make it worse. And I know I'm not telling you anything that you don't know, but I really, really encourage you to start sleep training your toddler now. It will take, you know, depending on which method you choose, one week, maybe two weeks to get your little one sleeping all night in their crib. And then you're buying yourself a few weeks of them getting solid, beautiful nighttime sleep. You getting the sleep that you need as you get more and more pregnant. So that when the newborn comes home, your little one is happily sleeping in their own room. It's not a worry anymore and you can be with your newborn more. So to be honest, any way of self-soothing, you know, Sleep training teaches our little ones to fall asleep on their own. Now, I'm not saying she's not going to continue. Like, she may need to bang herself a little bit on the crib. And I don't know, like, we can talk about that. If you decide to join the program, we can talk about that. We talk about interesting ways that our little ones uh, self-soothe themselves. But as long as it's not causing physical harm to her and you talk about it with her doctor, if you get the clear that everything seems okay, we can definitely um, sleep train your little one. So I would encourage you to talk to your little one's doctor and then consider starting sleep training. We would love to help you or, you know, if you would like to do it on your own, you can certainly do it on your own. Um, but I would, I would definitely encourage you to address it soon so that when your little one comes home from hospital, you can get as much rest as you need. Okay, good luck. Liana, my 14-month-old little one initiates sleep on her own and sleeps three hours for noon and 10 hours through the night but it takes her a lot more to fall asleep at bedtime need to fix it um yeah we talked about this before and i think you asked me about the schedule and i said as long as she's like happy thriving everything seems okay then i you know i don't think you have to work on it if there's some part of you that's just feeling like a little bit uneasy and that something about her sleep needs to change and I would say trust your gut but I again I think if she sleeps 10 hours at nine three during the day and is happy as a clam then I don't think you necessarily have to change anything um five to ten sorry five to twenty minutes to fall asleep at bedtime is completely normal so it's very normal for little ones to go into the crib even like um some of our support team members I think Alyssa was saying recently her two-year-old will sometimes talk, sing, hang out in her crib for 30 minutes at bedtime. And Alyssa's like, I'm not going to make big changes to her sleep schedule. Over the years, I've learned she just wants to hang out and chat to herself. She's a chatty Kathy. So I'm giving her this much time. Normally, it's about five to 20 minutes to fall asleep every night. But as your little one is sleep trained and over the months, 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 and over the years, you learn, my little one just likes to hang out and take a little bit longer to fall asleep. That's okay. Um, you can leave it. But I would say right now at this point, because I know you've recently sleep trained, if it's taking more than 20 minutes consistently, um, and if she's upset, you could consider having a look at her awake times and make sure, making sure they're on target. But otherwise, I think it's fine. If she sleeps beautifully at night and is happy, I don't think it's anything to worry about. Well done. Katie, asking for a friend. Are cat naps the born? The born, the born. Sorry, Katie, ask me again. Um, Nessa. Six month old moved recently and since then, baby that slept for seven hour stretches now wakes up every two hours. What could be happening? Could it be something in her sleep environment? Could it be something in the bedroom? Could it be like noises? Could it be temperature? Anything like that? Um, I would rule it out by first blacking out my baby's bedroom, like pitch, pitch, pitch black. So blacking out the windows, I would play white noise all night long, make sure it's at like a decent level, like around she's about 60, 65 decibels, several feet away from baby's bed. Um, so that can help if maybe this place is a little bit louder and you haven't realized it, you could play white noise. Um, it is normal for some little ones to hit a rough patch of sleep during the six months. So it could also be unrelated to the move. Um, I will say, so I'm going to drop a link to my six month old sleep guide. You can kind of have a look at that to make sure you're following those awake times and following all those tips. You know, it could be that your little one, yeah, just got a little bit older as well. And maybe awake times need to be a little bit different. Maybe there's something that's just coincidental with your move, but that we could work on with your little one's sleep schedule. Um, so have a look at my six month old sleep guide. 
Um, you could put a thermometer in the room to make sure it's something to do with the temperature. So one of the ones that kind of lights up, like red if it's getting too hot, um, or if your baby monitor has a thermometer setting, you could you know try to have a look at that to see potentially it could be something like that. Otherwise, it's probably just coincidental and it just has to do with your little one um, sleep pattern changing. So if your little one is not yet sleep trained, I would, if you're interested, I would go ahead and start. Now that they're six months old, they can learn to sleep independently in the crib all night long. So sometimes it's just bad luck, <laughs> but there is a way forward. And that is to get your little one sleeping independently. And those seven hour sleep stretches will come right back. Um, okay. I hope that helps. Have a look at my guide, consider the blackout, the white noise and the temperature, and I'm sure you'll find um, a solution. All righty. Next question, Alibaba. Hi, Julie, been doing your program since three months with so much success. Now seven months, she's fighting naps and bedtime. She may be ready. First of all, I'm happy that you've got so much success, Ali. That's amazing. Um, the second thing I'll say is but maybe are you ready to drop from three to two naps? Um, awake times may need to extend a little bit now that your little one is a little bit older. So you can look at lesson three in the program where we talk about awake times and you can have a look at uh, for a seven month old exactly where you should be at for that. Maybe you just need to tweak your little one's schedule a little bit. Maybe it's time to drop a nap. I'm linking to my guide on how to drop from three to two naps and stories um, in just a little while. So you can check that out to see if your little one is ready. Um, some parents say that there's a bit of a regression at the seventh month. There's a big wonder week, um, stormy phase, cloudy phase, stormy phase, right? Um, there's a stormy phase that could happen then, so you could consider that it's uh, caused by development. But I will link you to my seven-month-old sleep guide. You can have a look at that. Have a look at lesson three in our program. Um, between those two guides, you'll have a clear path to get back on track. And you can always hop back into the program. You know, it's very normal for little ones to hit rough patches and have to do a sleep training tune-up. So once you know your little one's sleep schedule is sorted out, Ali, then I would go to lesson seven um, and just do a sleep training tune-up. So you can go with the same method that worked a few months ago and just do a few nights starting back from night one and you should see your little ones uh, sleep improve. All right, hang in there, good luck, and let us know if we can help um, in any other way. Uh, Deem, I tried your peaceful nighttime routine, but some days she will take hours to fall asleep. Well, that's definitely not the point of it. Um, the point is actually for it to make it easier for your little one to fall asleep. So I would say it's probably something to do with your little one's daytime schedule, awake times, or naps not, where naps too short, where naps too long that day. It really depends on your little one's age. Um, but taking hours to fall asleep at bedtime a quick list of what could be causing that could be awake times that are way too long and your little one's really overtired. Um, less than two total hours of daytime sleep can really also wire and overstimulate our little ones. Getting more than three or four hours of daytime sleep can also make our little ones not fall asleep for ages at bedtime because they're just not tired enough. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so if I don't know how old your little one is, but if you want to go on to babysleepmadesimple.com and click on the top menu for your little one's age, you can find your corresponding age guide and you can start fresh there. And those tips will help you uh, get your little one well rested on a consistent routine. You can revisit the peaceful nightly ritual um, and start starting those steps again because it should definitely not take hours to fall asleep. Maybe your little one's getting a second wind. Um, which a lot of little ones do. And my parents still say it when they see my kids, like, oh, he's not gonna be falling asleep anytime soon for bedtime. And I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's like, six minutes later. Because, not that grandparents are wrong, grandparents are amazing, but it's not always sleepy signs that we look at. We look at awake times, we look at consistent bedtimes. And my son is amazing at hiding sleepy signs. He is like the life of the party, smiling, winking, kissing the girls. And then I know he's ready for bed. And he's like, no, nah, I'm good, I'm good. And he's like, I <laughs> passed out. So, but if I didn't, if I watched his sleepy signs, which were not there, and if I said he's not ready to sleep and I put him to sleep an hour or two later, he would get that second wind, you know, that rush of adrenaline, which would make it hard for him to fall asleep, which is very common for babies. So in the survival kit, if you look at lesson one, there's frequently asked questions um, at the bottom. 
when we talk about the peaceful nightly ritual and one of them is my baby gets a second wind at bedtime what can i do so it gives you specific tips for that all right i hope that helps good luck Katie, oh no, sent by accident. Ah, yes. At what age should naps start lasting longer than half an hour? Asking for a friend who is struggling with her six-month-old only napping for 30 minutes. Definitely at six months, we can expect your little one to nap for longer than 30 minutes. And it's at six months where we can expect more predictability and consistency from little one's naps. So Katie, have your friend. She can follow me on um, Instagram because I'm going to post in my stories in a little while guides for your friend. I think I'm already posting the six month old guide. Yes, I'm doing that. I'll do how to extend, um, baby's naps. So she can check out that guide. Yes. Yes. Those two guides should definitely give her clear tips on what she can do. Um, and I would say by the time your little one hits four to five months, we can expect naps that are consistently longer than 30 minutes for sure by six months. All right. You're a good friend, Katie. Alexis, what is the earliest morning nap time for an eight-month-old? Good question. It kind of depends on your little one's wake-up time, to be honest. In general, I like to avoid naps before 8 a.m. because they can perpetuate early wakings. You're like, but if my baby wakes at 5 a.m. in the morning, he's going to need a nap early. And you may need it in the very beginning to keep your baby well-rested. But as we go through sleep training and if we have any stubborn early wakings that just Dick, then I do encourage parents to try to hold their little one off and not have a nap until eight in the morning um, so that their little one's body clock can learn, oh wait, I need to be sleeping later because look, all these naps are happening later and bedtime's happening later. So in general, 8 a.m. Marcy again. Okay, I've already answered you, Marcy, and I'm going to tag you on my story. Lakshani. Five-month-old's fighting sleep when placed in the crib after the peaceful nightly ritual and giving a soother. So we hold her and put her to crib when she falls asleep because she wakes up 45 minutes or she sleeps through ah, eight to nine hours. Any tips to fix this? Yes. So I have a night waking guide. Oh, I've got a lot of, a lot of stories to make today. But I have a night waking guide on my website. But in general, if our little ones fall asleep at bedtime and wake up about 45 minutes later, it's usually from one of two reasons. The first being that they were helped to sleep at bedtime. Wah, 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 which you already know um, and sleep training will sort that out but the other reason is your little one's awake time was too long before bedtime so I would if you always kind of have the same awake time uh, before bedtime and the same bedtime I would actually encourage you to shorten it by about 20 or 30 minutes tonight so if your little one normally is bedtime is 7 30 try to put them down for seven o'clock tonight and see if that makes a difference with your little one sleeping a longer stretch that first stretch of the night we usually see that happen um Yes, so I would do that, and then how old is your little one? Ah, five months. Yes, yeah, so what I would probably do with a five-month-old is work on their uh, awake times and sleep schedule first, and you should see that sleep stretch extend anyway, and then you can begin sleep training, which is getting your little one to fall asleep independently at bedtime, because when they can do that, you will definitely see these wakings that happen soon after bedtime, within the first few hours of bedtime, those will disappear because your little one may still stir at those times as they are used to doing, but they immediately drop right back into the sleep cycle because they know how to settle themselves to sleep. It's pretty magical. So um, I will link you to that night waking guide and also my five month old guide. So sleep training and making sure your little one has appropriate awake times and naps can fix all that. All right, good luck. Got time for about one, maybe two more questions. Ah, two twos back. 26 month old wakes at 6.20, naps at one, and in bed at 7.15. Her nap is short and she's up too early. Yeah, so definitely move the nap earlier. So she, if you, how old, two years old, 6.20. So two two, I would try having the nap at 12.30, like asleep at 12.30 for a week. And if it's working but not fully working, you could even move it to 12.30. Did I just say 12.30? To 12. <laughs> um, at two years old, your little one can handle five and a half to six hours of wait time. So try to go slowly, 12.30 for a week and potentially even moving it up a little bit earlier. That can help your little one extend their nap. It can also help with early wakings. And then bedtime should be five and a half, maybe six hours from waking from the nap. That's a good way to know um, what time it should be. Okay, good luck. Definitely not a later bedtime. Definitely not. The little black kitchen cart. Baby was sleeping through the night, weeks six to eight. 
week nine. Baby waking up every two to three hours at night. I'm sorry. It When our little ones are young, one, two, and three months, many little ones sleep pretty darn well at night. Like one night feed, really long sleep stretches. Life's great. I dodged that bullet. But what we find is there's just so much development happening. And as I mentioned earlier, weeks three to five can be really notorious for sleep issues popping up. It's just a part of development. You haven't done anything wrong. It's all good. We gotta let your little one go through this development. We're gonna keep them well rested. And as soon as we know that they're done, as soon as they turn 20 weeks from their due date, then you can begin teaching more independent sleep habits, which will help those street sleep stretches go long again and get your little one sleeping through the night. So your little one is week nine or 10 right now. Um, I will drop a link to my guide for two month olds. And you can check out like specific tips for this age that can um, definitely improve their sleep. It doesn't mean you have to wait until they're five months old to do to five months old to do anything. There's certainly things that you can do now to encourage your little one to start sleeping better. All right, hang in there. Congratulations on your little one. And let us know if you need any more help. Okay, last question. Pro tools, can you recommend bed bumpers? Baby bumps his head on the crib. So sadly, um, bumpers have been linked to really terrible things that happening to babies, strangulation, suffocation, entrapment, really, really bad things. So when we look at that, and we look at babies bumping their heads, bumping their hands, like, you know, sounding like that, and you're like, oh my God, my baby, like I've been through it. We have to choose the less dangerous, basically. So really there should be no bumpers in your baby's bed and i don't like the mesh bumpers either for that reason um what i will say is that the vast majority of babies do not hurt themselves they're just moving around getting comfortable i mean this this morning my little guy was like like trying to eat his crib like you know banging on it and laughing and i was like all right well if you're not upset i'm not going to be upset about it but my daughter would roll around and you know I'd hear that, I'd look on the monitor and it would be like her hand and I would just cringe and I would like wait for this long three seconds where I thought she was gonna start screaming, but she never did. So my point in all this is that although it may sound painful, um, if our little ones aren't crying or showing us that it's caused any pain, then it's best to just like let them do their thing, grow comfortable in the crib. And it's usually a phase of little ones exploring their crib and then you know, as they get older, they don't need to do it. Now, there are some parents that are like, no, my baby falls back. He's standing up and he trips and he falls back and he hits his head. And I, I, I feel for you guys, especially if it's happening repeatedly. So the only product that I recommend is called Vertical Crib Liners. Um, I'll try to find an Amazon link to link you guys to. Now, the only thing is they, they're pretty pricey. They can be like 70 to 100 bucks. But the idea with them is it's a piece of cloth and they wrap each crib bar individually because there's no way for your little one, there's no strings hanging. Like with no, no, normal bumpers, there's no strings hanging. There's no way the baby can like move their head behind the bumper thing. These are just pieces of cloth. I think they Velcro or zip, can't remember. I don't use them. I just have my baby in a bear crib. <laughs> but they wrap each crib bar individually so it softens up crib. Airflow can still happen and there's no strings. There's no way for your baby to get entrapped or anything like that. So you can find them on Amazon. They are a bit pricey, but if your little one's really struggling, it could maybe be something that you would consider. Um, yes, but otherwise, no. And I'm, I wish I had a better answer for you, but we can't recommend bumpers because it's just they're just not safe. Okay, um, if any of you guys use vertical crib liners or anything very similar, let me know. Um, all right, guys, it was lovely to chat with you. Thank you for joining. I love spending my Mondays with you. If you guys need anything during the week, don't hesitate to send us a DM. My support team and I would love to help you out. Check out my stories in a little while. As soon as we hang up, I'm going to do stories because my family's not home yet, <laughs> so I have time to do them. Um, let us know if we can help. If you're interested in getting the sleep that you and your family need, we would love to help you. You can check out 21 Days to Peace and Quiet. You can check out my nap training program. I'll put links to them in stories as well. Um, we'd love to help you guys get the sleep that you need so you can enjoy the holidays um, and especially start 2021 well rested and happy and calm and all that good stuff. All right, guys? Love you to bits um, and see you next week at this time. Take care. Thanks for the hearts. I love them. Bye.